Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'll tell you right up front, this is going to be a weird video. <laughs> I made this little turtle this week and I really like the way it came out. And I even took videos while I was making it so that I could, you know, show you how I was doing it. But about every five minutes I changed my mind because the thing I'd done before wasn't working. I had to change it and do something different. Now if I was a, a nice person, I would just go ahead and make another one and show you how I would really make this guy if I did him over, but I'm packing my stuff up and uh, getting ready to move and besides, I don't, I don't really need two turtles, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I put this fellow together and then I'm also going to be showing you as much as possible how I would do it differently if I made him over again without actually making them over because I really do only need one turtle. So um, hopefully this will be useful to you in some way. Um, if nothing else, it'll show you that you don't have to know exactly how you're going to make something before you start. Um, in fact, most of the time I don't. It, I mean, it, it's, it's nice to know if you think you have a couple thousand people looking over your shoulder, but if you're really just building something for yourself, if you decide you have to change your mind, it doesn't really matter. It just you know, if it if the first thing doesn't work, just try something else, and it usually turns out just fine. First time I made the shell, I put some shop pound mache over some um, aluminum foil that I had put on the inside of a bowl. It turns out that the um, the paper mache will actually stick to aluminum foil. <laughs> I didn't realize that, and so that I had to throw that out. So I started over again, put some plastic over a, a bowl. Um, the problem with that, of course, is that the bowl's flat on the bottom, and so was my shell. So that had to be fixed later. I also kind of, as an afterthought, remembered that he had to have space in the shell for his neck and his, his arms and stuff to be able to stick out. So I kind of squished the paper mache up while it was still wet, trying, trying to um, create the spaces for the legs, and I didn't get them quite in the right place. And I, I had to do a lot of repair to the to the shell afterwards. Um, if I did this guy over again, I would, this is how I would do it. I would put the, the plastic over the bowl like I did before. If you get the bowl wet, the plastic will actually stick to it. And then I would go ahead and, and round it off with some aluminum foil to start with. I just uh, hot glued that to the plastic and just kind of rounded it off. And I would make sure that I had the shape of the uh, of the shell determined before I got started, uh, so that the so that the legs uh, would be coming out in the right place, and and um, and so there'd be plenty of room for the neck. Uh, that's something that I did not do before, and I should have. Since I decided at a later time that I was going to make uh, the whole thing out of air dry clay anyway, it would have been an awful lot faster if I'd used this. Um, plaster cloth, plaster gauze, I think it's called plaster bandage of some places. You get that at a hobby store or online. And you just need a couple of layers. If you put the plaster all the way over and around this uh, aluminum foil, then you'd end up naturally with a flare. I'm going to try to get this out here. The shell flares out on the outside edge. And so that would be already uh, sculpted in. You wouldn't have to worry about it. You might need to trim around the bottom because the plaster cloth might uh, stick over. Um, but once it's hard, just in a few minutes, you can take it off the bowl and then put another uh, couple of pieces around the edge to make a nice, smooth uh, surface. And then once you do add the air dry clay, it's going to be nice and strong and hard. And it'll be round. This guy uh, did not turn out to be round which is okay, but round would have been nice. Before I ever got started making the body, I, I built the, the bottom. Um, that's also a hard plate, and I used a piece of cardboard for that. That's a good idea, it worked really well, except that um, once I had everything put together, it didn't fit, and I needed to uh, do a lot of repair and, and cutting. So I would wait until I had the, um, all of the aluminum foil on the body, and then I would uh, go ahead and cut the, the bottom plate. Now the other thing I did, which um, seemed like a really good idea at the time, was I uh, put the shell down on a piece of paper and drew out the lines for where I would put the uh, aluminum uh, wire, the armature wire, 
And basically the armature was made in exactly the same way as I made those uh, little dogs that I wrote a book about. Um, and, and because I had the shell as a, um, you know, as a starting point, I was just absolutely sure that it would fit, but it turned out it didn't. I had to uh, actually cut the fellow in half um, before I could, in order to get him to fit into the shell. He just wasn't long enough. I think uh, if I did this again, I would go ahead and draw it out just exactly like I did, and then I would cut the paper apart and spread it out maybe as much as two inches and tape it on and then use that for, for the um, for the actual pattern for the armature wire. Then I'd be able to turn the shell over like yay, of course this guy's already done, and then I would be able to attach the middle part of that armature wire up uh, on the inside of the shell right at the top so that it would already be attached to the shell before I ever started adding the uh, aluminum foil to create the, the shape of the legs and the head. I had to keep picking up the shell and testing it and all that and um, it, it still ended up uh, needing an awful lot of repair to the shell just to get it to fit properly. Um, after that's done, instead of, of doing everything individually, of putting the, the air dry clay on the two pieces of shell separately and then also on the body pieces separately, I would have everything already attached together before I put any air dry clay on anything. It is going to be fairly thick air dry clay because it's going over some crumpled aluminum foil. You can't put a really thin layer on there or you would have the little bumpiness of the foil sticking out. So you probably need to um, keep your turtle, if you make one, um, in a nice warm spot with some moving air for at least three or four days to make sure that it's totally dry before you add the acrylic paint. The one thing that I really did like was using the air dry clay because I could put that silly kind of goof, doofus grin on there and it was really easy to do. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, hopefully this was at least a little bit useful, <laughs> if, if nothing else, just to show you that you really can make something really cool even if you don't know what you're doing when you start. Come on and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. And if you make a turtle, by the way, come and show him off. I'd like to see how yours turns out. <laughs> I'll see you there. Bye-bye.